I'm filming on my GoPro today. I got your water. You filming on your GoPro? On my GoPro today. You vlogging? Yeah. Oh, sh welcome back. You already know there's some real stuff happening. <laughs> water. We got drunk one night. Oh my God. Um, I got drunk last night. And we agreed to this, so. We gotta do it. It's not something we typically do. It might be trash, it might be good, it might be bad. Who knows? We're we're capturing an event. Grand opening for a barbershop. We might be doing photos, I might be doing video, we might swap off, do whatever, but this is what it looked like. Watch it, then after that, we're gonna show you how we made it. So I'm gonna be using the C200 for this. Um, I got the 16 to 35 and that's all I'm gonna be using. I was gonna use the 24, but I'm like, ah, I don't really wanna have a lot of different lenses. I'm gonna just use this and then I'm gonna rock out. It's pretty lit in here. I've already checked out the space the other day. So it's gonna be all handheld. Get some cool slow motion, some good coverage and we'll see what we make. I wanna break this down here at the desk because I didn't even think about all of the crazy sounds and music and people talking and all of that that was gonna be happening at the shop while I was filming the video. So I wasn't able to give you guys an interactive behind the scenes experience on set. But in all honesty, this video is just randomness, but it's organized randomness. And that's what I wanna break this down. That's the way I wanna break this down to you guys. If you think about creating these short promotional commercial pieces in this aspect, it makes the thought process of what your film is so much easier. So let's just dive straight into that. I love close-ups, but I can't film the entire video close because then the edit feels claustrophobic and then you don't even know where you are, what this video is even about. So these wide establishing shots are just to establish to the viewer what this place looks like, what you'll see when you come here to get your hair cut. So for me, when I film these shots using my 16 to 35, I just go wide. I just post up in the corner and I just film the wide shot. I want it to be static and then in post, if I need to add movement to it, it'll be easy for me to do that. But I do always want to establish the scene. Get the wide shot of either the specific barber that you're filming, show his chair, show the surrounding environment around that, and just show the barbershop. That's it. You gotta establish the scene. So this could be super simple. It could be static, it could be rocky, it could be you moving in on a gimbal. It doesn't matter necessarily the movement of the shot, but just the fact that it's wide and it shows the viewer where and what's happening. These are the intricate details that need to be seen in order to establish the process of what the video is about. So as a barber, the intricate details would be the close-up of the clippers hitting the client's hair or them brushing the hair off the client's face or them doing the razor on the person's shape up or on their beard or them spraying the, the hairspray after the cut, you know, ripping the freaking uh, cape off of them at the end. Like these are the detail shots. These are the shots that you need to see uh, to give you that entire experience of you getting your hair cut at these places. Uh, so. The detail shots, these can be super close, these can be medium, um, but these are the shots that you wanna get to really hone in on what's happening. Transitional shots are really the shots that help you break up the edit. In editing these sorts of really random videos, it's very easy for you to either get super caught up in slow motion b-roll or for you to get super caught up in fast motion handheld shots or for you to get super caught up in static tripod shots and transitional shots for me are really just wow whatever you could think of things that are off the wall movements that are erratic that you would never make an entire video of, but these short little shots just help dice up the edit. So for me, I really like filming these shots in the slow shutter mode. So just basically dropping the shutter super low, getting in handheld, and just filming what's happening that you would be doing on the detail shot, but just doing it even more rocky and even more erratic. It's very jarring for a viewer to go from a super rocky shot that you filmed handheld to a static shot. Like if you just like hard cut that, 
it's jarring for the viewer to look at and it just breaks up the pace. But if you add in one of those quick flashes and then go into that or whatever the case may be, it, it just makes the transitional process so much easier. So my thought process behind that is just get random stuff. If you have been liking these random like text titles that I've been using for these categories, I got these from Canva, the sponsor of today's video. If you've never heard of Canva, it's an online design platform with tons of templates for whatever you need in your entrepreneurial business. I love it because I'm able to create either YouTube thumbnails, uh, shoot business cards, flyers, uh, freaking animated Instagram posts, short promotional videos to send to my clients uh, after I finish their music videos. Canva's dope, it's completely free. You can use it right now for $0, no money, uh, but you really unlock uh, crazy experience when you try out the pro subscription and the pro subscription you get extra stock media uh, you get extra templates it's just a great experience and my link down in the description if you guys want to check it out we'll give you an extended 45 day trial of that pro subscription so go check it out it's <laughs> you really have nothing to lose because it's free but i think that once you try the pro side you'll realize that Canva is a really good asset to us uh, entrepreneurial creatives. So go check it out. Now to get into this edit, I think the biggest thing when creating these sorts of random pieces and commercials like this is just sound design, man. I prefer to film my sound design and what's happening on set and record it when I can. But the fact that I'm in a barbershop and it's a bunch of people talking and it's a bunch of music that I'll get copyright strike for, I wasn't able to do that for this video. So I went through and I got all of my sound effects off of Epidemic Sound. But before I even get into sound design, when I go through and do the editing process, I like to just find a track that I like and I like to just splice it up to match the edit, manipulating different parts of the song to match what's happening in the video. So throughout my transitional pieces in the actual edit, you may notice that the song kind of seems like it goes through a warping phase and then throughout the slow motion parts of the actual edit i don't know why i keep saying actual man every time i get on this camera i just keep saying actual <laughs> throughout the edit in the parts where the slow motion is happening i will take out the hi-hats and i'll just use the melody and the bass this is basically just me reconstructing reconstructing construct reconstruct reconstructing reconstructing the song to match the edit <laughs> So after you go through and lay all your clips onto the song, make sure you reconstruct it, man, because it doesn't feel like a highlight video that you just throw a bunch of random clips over top of a song. When you reconstruct your song to your edit, it feels like this song was made specifically for the edit. So that's what I do first. After that, I turn off all of the music and then I just watch through the video without any sound on it. And I try to get sound effects to match what's happening in the video. And this helps carry it so much more as well. So honing in and focusing on specific moments that's happening in the edit, shots where the barber's cutting the client's hair with the scissors. Okay, I get a specific sound effect for that. Okay, shots where I'm super close to the barber, he's cutting their hair. Okay, the sound of the clippers needs to be louder because I'm close and it feels more immersive. Or if I'm far away, the sound of the clippers needs to be more into the ambient background because that's just the sound that you hear inside of a barbershop. Then once all of that's done, it's just bringing both of these elements in, the music and the sound design and balancing these out and making sure nothing's peaking. When it came to the color grade for this, I literally just used a LUT from my latest LUT pack, my music video LUT pack. It was the Buford LUT, shameless plug. These LUTs are great. And I'm happy to be using LUTs again because for like the past two to three years, I was going through and color grading all my stuff from scratch, which is fine. I enjoy it. But when you could just drop that LUT on and it looks good, 
that's a plus. So if you like it, make sure you guys go check out the Lead Pack. It's a link down in the description to my digital store. The freaking uh, the film burn transitions, those are from my film aesthetics pack. Shameless plug as well. I'm not trying to sell y'all, but these are the things that I use in the edit. So let me know down in the comment section if you guys enjoyed this video and you like the commercial. I don't personally see myself doing much more of these. This isn't really my thing, but it was fun to do the sound design and get it to look cool. I enjoyed that. If you're new to the channel, you like content like this, consider hitting that subscribe button. But with that being said, I'm out, y'all. Peace.